Joining me now to talk more about Nest Hub Max is Prabhu. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> so let's start with a quick overview. Tell us about the larger screen, the camera, and all the cool features that they activate. So Nest Hub Max is our premium smart display designed for the center of your home. Hmm. And it builds on all of the great experiences we built with the Google Nest Hub, which we launched last year. So we've got a 10-inch HD screen for an even bigger screen for your Google Photos and for watching YouTube TV and all of the other experiences there. It's got premium stereo sound built in, and it's also got a really helpful camera with all kinds of features and experiences that it can offer. Everything from video calling with Google Duo to uh, peace of mind through the built-in Nest Cam functionality that you, allows you to uh, keep, an, keep an eye on what's happening at home to personalization through a feature that we're calling Face Match. Mm. Very cool. And what's your favorite feature? So I personally love the video calling with Duo because I've got a two and a half year old at home and he loves to call his grandparents on, on our Nest Hub Max at home. And the auto framing feature of, of our Duo calling allows him to run around the room and, and my parents can still mm -hmm. keep track of uh, what's happening in his busy life. That's awesome. Let's talk for a moment about privacy. Now there's a huge consumer demand for privacy and transparency about our personal information, how it's stored, and how it's used. Now this seems like one of those things that the team was particularly passionate about and proud of. Absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right. We thought about privacy from the very beginning of our process designing the Nest Hub Max, and actually even going further back, the Nest Hub. One of the reasons that we had our first smart display be one without a camera is because we wanted to make it available as a device that you would feel comfortable putting in any room of your house. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we knew that the camera unlocks a lot of helpful functionality and we wanted to provide that option as well for consumers. And so the way we thought about designing the camera was very much with privacy at the forefront. We thought about easy and simple controls for all of the features, which are all opt-in features and you choose what you want to use. And there's simple controls like the hardware switch on the back of the device that lets you quickly just turn off the camera and the microphones. Mm -hmm. On top of that, taking a step back from the individual products, we as Google Nest have also tried to define a set of privacy commitments for the home, which Those articulates awesome. our point of view on what it means for us to respect your privacy and all of the products that we build. And those are really specific factual commitments about what you can expect with your personal data when you're using our products in your home. One of the really insightful things about the keynote that resonated with me was that there's a fundamental difference between a smart home and a helpful home. Can you define that difference? Sure. So smart home technology is fantastic. It helps us solve all kinds of really interesting and important problems in our homes and in our lives. Uh, but one of the challenges with smart home technology is it's kind of complicated. It's not that easy to use. And so we wanted to think about how we can solve that as we push forward with our vision for the helpful home. And there's a few key tenets for what we think the helpful home looks like. One is that the products in it should be easy to use for everyone in the home. Mm -hmm. The second is it should feel personal. As you use these devices, they should get to know you and, and be able to provide an experience that's tailored to you and, and your family. The third is they should work really well together. These devices aren't just operating in a vacuum individually. They're helping fill out your entire home, mm -hmm. and so your whole home should work together really well. And then the last is, of course, the one we just mentioned, that it should really respect your privacy and, and that privacy should be part of the design of all of the products that you bring into your home. Let's talk about design a bit more. Uh, I think designing for a screen that's meant to be viewed up close far away and from different angles it seems like a really difficult problem. Can you talk about your design process while addressing that challenge? Absolutely. So when we started working on the Google Nest Hub, the, the first smart display that we built, uh, we were thinking about that first and foremost because we wanted this device to feel like an ambient, glanceable device, not one that needs your focused attention for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. And so we designed the user experience on that device to be readable from a variety of distances. Obviously, the fact that it's voice means that it can, uh, it can be used from both near and far. Then when we went to the Nest Hub Max and we added a, a camera to the device, the other thing that we thought about was how can the he camera help solve that same problem for, for you and your family in the home. Mm -hmm. And so an important decision we made was to provide a really wide, wide field of view for the camera. It's got a 127 degree field of view. So if you think about all of the experiences that you're using the camera for, from video calling, where it allows you to move around the room with auto framing, to the uh, built-in Nest Cam functionality, where you can get a, a pretty good view of what's, what's happening in the room, mm -hmm. to the personalization with Face Match, where 
our, our thinking was the device should be able to tell that you're looking at it when you, can, when you can see it and when you would be able to receive the personalized experience that it's giving you. And so all of those design decisions kind of helped us to, to feel like we're extending that whether near or far it's great experience from the Nest Hub to the Nest Hub Max. Awesome. Okay, one last thing. During user research, what was the most fun thing that you saw someone do that you didn't expect? So one of the things I love about our user research is that we get to see how our products fit into their homes and we sort of get to feel the impact that we're having on real homes and real people. And one small example of an insight that we get from that research is, hey, where do people put our devices when we get them in their homes? Mm -hmm. And we, we learn a lot from, for example, the, the other Googlers who test our products and help give us feedback before we, before we ship them to the public. And there was one email thread where a, a Googler who was testing the Nest Hub Max shared a photo of his living room where he had the Nest Hub Max, which is already a pretty big screen, sitting right next to his big flat screen TV <laughs> on the wall. And that was obviously not what I had expected because I figured, you know, these devices are big enough that you're going to put this, this bigger screen in a room that doesn't already have another screen. But we had a, we had a dialogue with, with the Googler and we realized uh, the value of sort of checking your assumptions and learning from what people do to fit your products into their home. So he loved the photo frame in his in his living room and loved that you could see it from a little farther away because it was bigger. He loved the fact that it had a clock that he could look at any time. He loved that he could, he could control his TV and his home theater system by voice through this device. And mm -hmm. so uh, I think that every time we actually see how our products fit into people's homes, we learn a lot and that's one of the most, uh, the most fun examples of research that we do. Thanks for swinging by Prabhu. This has been really insightful. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.